folks. I'm here to discuss my Elder Gods theory. That theory forms the basis of my trilogy, as Dolores said, which is collectively known as the Journals of the Ancient Ones. <clears throat> From an extensive investigation of Earth's archaeological, geological, and paleoanthropological records, the Elder Gods theory emerged during a nine-year research and writing project. I claim nine years, but additions and updates, along with research and revisions, have continued into the present since its onset in August of 1996. Now, almost 13 years later, such work might have taken an ordinary person <clears throat> maybe six years to complete, but like I said, I'm still working on it. This research was conducted with an open mind without a preconceived conclusion anticipated from the study. In fact, between 70 and 75 percent of the notes ultimately used for the first uh, journal uh, were collected before the, the theory had first started to emerge. And yes, I had on several occasions considered abandoning this project, but I figured I had too many hours invested to merely walk away. But more importantly, I was also learning things not taught by conventional educators, and thus remained very curious and motivated to continue this research. However, it should be noted that I possess no psychic abilities, no metaphysical skills whatsoever, or have I any personal knowledge of extraterrestrials, nor have I ever seen what I would consider a bona fide UFO. The conclusions for the Elder Gods theory were simply derived from old-fashioned study and research. From a scientific per uh, perspective, using logic and deduction. This investigation sought a theory that would unite the many different elements of Earth's known past, all within a common and logical explanation. <clears throat> Due to my natural skepticism, such as she, uh, <clears throat> I prefer to thoroughly investigate and analyze a topic before coming to any conclusions. Thus, I refrain from making fantastic claims, or at least try, perhaps due to my mechanical engineering background. As an engineer, I strive to fully understand and then explain how things work. And that might help justify my requiring those additional years that were taken to complete this research. Probably still doesn't help, though, does it? <laughs> the Elder Gods theory was partially detected from a common mythology that existed throughout the ancient world. That included a primordial belief in a golden age when order was created and peaceful times prevailed. I concluded that that golden age existed roughly between 11,500 BC and 10,500 BC. Ancient texts indicate that the very earliest or eldest gods had created that golden age, although their influence on Earth vastly predated that period. Those elder gods were once the greatest powers, but supposedly became evil when younger gods eventually became dominant upon Earth and displaced them. Over time, these younger gods defeated the elder gods, forcing them into exile from Earth until some future time when their return would be allowed. Those elder gods were the much later offspring of the earliest species of intelligent life that had formed shortly after the Big Bang Genesis, which occurred some 13.7 billion years ago. Those first beings emerged perhaps as soon as only 2,000, excuse me, 2 billion years or so ago after the creation of the universe. But that earliest life formation still took place about seven billion years before Earth and our solar system even formed, 
which only occurred about 4.7 billion years ago. After undergoing a difficult start, those earliest beings gained great knowledge and enlightenment and eventually met other like-minded early life forms elsewhere in distant galaxies. Over time, still other early species were also encountered, representing a total of seven life forms from seven different home worlds. Ultimately, those seven different species formed a coalition that became known as the Cosmic Order to help younger emerging races they might encounter throughout the universe. The intent of that organization was to manage the development of each infant race they might encounter. That was accomplished by educating its populace and controlling what was taught, resulting in measured progress through regulated growth. Any further advancements then depended upon the achieved maturity and morality of each emerging uh, species. Such nurturing and assistance was not merely an altruistic act of advanced enlightened beings, but also an act of self-preservation. By thwarting the innate trait of self-destructive behavior inherent in infant races, their own existence and longevity could also be assured. Over eons of time, this group of enlightened beings became known as the Ancient Ones, and much later were commonly known on Earth as the Elder Gods. The Ancient Ones were altruistic and pragmatic beings, neither benign nor malevolent, whose purpose was to promote strict adherence with their cosmic order. Their cosmic order evolved as a result of their enlightenment and perhaps even at the direction of the Creator. That code of conduct was created to produce and maintain universal harmony. It was also an attempt to break the entire repetitive cycle of chaos and destruction that had once threatened the well-being of the early universe by guiding infant races towards peaceful coexistence and enlightenment. It was the process mentioned in ancient texts that brought harmony and order from chaos. That code, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, that code allowed knowledge and civilization to be bestowed upon emerging worlds in exchange for a regulated and metered rate of growth that was based on the level of enlightenment and the value system of each infant world. Essentially, this, this code acted as a safeguard against chaos. This code of conduct required civilizations to envision all possible outcomes from their actions and inventions, knowing that all acts have permanent consequences on everything throughout the cosmos. That code stated that the rights of a species ended infringed upon the rights of other life forms and the universal well-being of the cosmos as a whole. The cosmic order was a simple code of conduct consisting of basic laws, rules, and regulations universally applied throughout the cosmos. There will be more about this code discussed later in this presentation. But meanwhile, long ago in a faraway galaxy, Kind of sounds like a George Lucas movie. <laughs> Our solar system eventually formed about 4.7 billion years ago, some 9 billion years after the universe had first formed. Much later, after billions of years had transpired, representatives from that Cosmic Order Coalition ultimately contacted our solar system where human-like life was first developing on a planet beyond Earth, 